I play a ton of different card games. Some of them are older, some of them are new, but recently I have come across my favorite card game in a very long time. And that game is called Lorcana. The thing about Lorcana is that there's no official online client for the game because this is a physical TCG. And yes, I have spent a ton of money on this game, but thankfully someone thought the game was so good that they decided to make an online client that's free and you get all the cards to play with. It's, um, it's pretty great. Now, if you're semi interested into this game, you're probably asking yourself, why should I play it? And how do you play it? And let me show you both. In almost every other card game, the main goal is to kill your opponent one way or another. But in Lorcana, that is not the case at all. The way you win a game in Lorcana is by getting 20 lore. Now, in order to get 20 lore, you have to play character cards. Let's use Lilo as an example. Lilo costs one mana. She has one attack and one willpower. But these little diamond things right here is how much lore she gives if she goes questing and questing is the core mechanic of this game the way you quest with a character is pretty simple you play the character it has summoning sickness and then the very next turn you can quest and gain their lore but this is where the game takes a very strategic step if you decide to quest use an ability or attack an opposing creature your character becomes exerted when a character is exerted that is when your opponent is allowed to strike your character see there's this weird little game of do I want to quest or do I want to protect protect my characters and it ends up being a very unique way of playing a card game. There's also items and songs which are basically spells that you can cast if you have enough mana but the game ends up being a very simple game to get into but can be incredibly nuanced kind of like Hearthstone and probably the most unique thing about Lorcana is the mana system. The mana in this game is called ink and you only get ink by sacrificing cards to put into your ink well but not every single card can be put into your ink well they need to have this little like diamond gold thing around their cost when it comes to deck building in Lorcana, you have to have at least 60 cards in your deck you can only use up to four copies of each card and you can pick from two different colors the colors drastically change on how you play your deck for example in this aggro deck we are using amber and emerald these two colors allow us to use cheaper characters with good lore gain when we quest i also just want to point out because there's no going face in Lorcana, aggro matchups have a lot of decisions centered around the board and i can't lie it's pretty great not dying on turn two rather than me explaining every small detail to you let me show you what a game of Lorcana looks like I am bronze three thanks for asking we're gonna play control and the reason we're gonna play control today is because a it's also pretty good in the game but most importantly I like taking control of the narrative in the game and because I'm literally you know role playing as a Disney character in this I have to be into it right we're gonna think about what cards I'm okay with tossing into the ink wall I'm okay with tossing Maleficent uh we don't really need him in the early game Jafar's fine but we don't really have a great way of getting new cards i guess Maleficent really works with jafar so that's fine we have elsa snow queen herself archimedes is fine we only need one one drop but we could toss one into the ink wall so that's fine we don't need aladdin i think this is fine we'll do this all right be prepared it's a really slow card but we still have two maleficence which replaces itself so the weird thing about this game is unlike magic where you need to draw lands and play lands or in hearthstone where you get automatic mana cards need to be put into your ink well like he just did so he put a card into his ink well it was gray that that's important to know because it lets you know what you're going against. So I'm going to toss Sergeant Tibbs. You did good, sir. And I'm going to put Archimedes in. I don't know why there's not really a difference. It's just the difference of color. And I think this might be a hot take here, but I do believe that red is a worse color than purple. And also look at this owl looking sick and vicious. Sergeant Tibbs looks like kind of a little bitch, if I'm going to be honest. And we're not about that here. What do they do? Uh, befuddle. Return a character or an item with two or lost in their hand. Okay, so... um. Our Archimedes is back into our hand, which is a bit unfortunate to say the least. Uh, I guess in this case, you can go to the inkwell now. Thanks for thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. We'll play the doctor himself. I don't know what movie this guy's from, but I think he's from the princess and the frog. And fun fact in that movie, I'm the frog. Pota is choosing trigger action. So he played Magic Broom, which says when you play this character, you may shuffle a card from any discard into its player's deck. And I can tell you this right now. He didn't do mine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he shuffled the funnel in unless he decided not to. I'm I'm gonna put Aladdin back. We don't really need to get one lore. No one has a lore yet, so it's kind of useless. So we played Elsa. The reason why Elsa is good is because it has the freeze ability, which lets us exert a chosen opposing character, which means we can't currently attack the magic broom because it's not exerted. Being exerted means this. Basically, it's tapped, and I'm gonna just make my guy go quest, which is probably a mistake because he doesn't have any attack. The good news about this is that if it swings at my dude. Okay, the good thing about this is that he used mana to kill this for some reason, and I don't know why, and that he's now exerted, which is what I was going to do with Elsa, but I guess I guess it wasn't in the cards. Am I right? 
<laughs> All right, we're probably playing Jafar here, and I don't really need a second Elsa, so I will be tossing her into the Inkwell. Let us play our Jafar Keeper of Secrets. Jafar gets plus one attack for each card in your hand, so he is a four or five. Shout out to my boy Yeti. So I actually will use Elsa to attack. I could get the one lore, but I'm over the one lore. Easy. So far, we're in a really good spot. I don't know why my hand's like off centered though. It kind of pisses me off a little bit. Another magic broom, really? Okay. So they could put another magic broom into their hand or to their deck. I'm not really worried about it. I haven't been worried about it since about 2003. We're kind of chilling. He's got more cards in their deck. He's got 50. I got 49. He's going to put the Hercules into his inkwell and he's going to pass. Really good for me, to be honest. Again, we want to still keep putting cards into our inkwell, but we will draw first because we could put them in any order. Actually, Jafar is looking very nice today. Jafar gives me two lore and I'm actually a big fan of I'm probably gonna full quest everything here because if they swing into Elsa she's gonna die anyways and I might as well get the one lore we can just drop a second Jafar so we'll put the doctor into the inkwell tip of the hat to you sir goodbye uh we'll play Jafar Jafar has less attack now but we're gonna quest with them both regardless and we are winning this game four to zero feels pretty sick all right, so they're playing Maleficent. They're drawing a card is what it is. Playing Befuddle again. What's he bouncing back? Oh, he's just using it for his inkwell. All right, I don't know what this guy's playing. He's playing like a super weird deck and he's questing with his broom, really? All right, let's see what we got. I might actually exert this right now so Jafar can take care of Captain Hook. In 1v1 combat, I, I, I mean, Captain Hook maybe stands a slight chance, but honestly, at the just sheer girth of Jafar, it's probably GG. I could kind of get down with the sickness for drawing two cards, to be honest. So let's do this first. I could actually use a character that costs three or more to cast this for free, which is actually rather picante if I do say so myself. Um, You know what? I'm kind of for it, to be honest. I don't really care about Captain Hook. Okay, uh, this was kind of useless. I am going to put Sergeant Tibbs back into the inkwell. See you, buddy. And I think I'm going to play two Maleficent here just to cycle my deck and draw more resources. That's me ahead on board. Uh, let's get for a lore here. I could swing at the magic broom, but that's some pussy shit, man. Red's the control class, the real control class. Red's like priest. You know, if you put oh shit in my ass, hold on a second. I was about to say how, you know, gray doesn't really have a ton of resources to kind of deal with my board, uh, but I take that all back. But if they do double trade this, I'm actually kind of okay with it. So he's purple and gray. What am I really? I guess I'm worried for like potentially Elsa. There's a better Elsa. I know that sounds weird, but there is another Elsa. Aladdin, you say? Okay, I, I'm pretty okay with doing this. Let's just draw some cards. Dragonfire is good. Magic Mirror is good. We don't really need to play the Magic Mirror. So I'm going to throw back LeFou here. We probably don't really need him. And I'm going to play Aladdin. Uh, the benefit of Aladdin is I get to steal their lore. Also, we get to play Aladdin. Okay, Archimedes into the ink wall. So it really, I'm at, oh, a whole new world. Okay. A whole, man, that was actually really good for them. That was a really, really good card for them to have. Gray is pretty sick. I mean, all the colors in this game are actually really good. There's not like a really bad color here. This guy's really trying to sweep me up, man. I'm not, I'm not for it. Did I just topped? Oh, he shuffled that into my, why would you shuffle that into my deck, you clown? So we can play the doctor here who says, we don't have a doctor on board already, but whenever one of your other character is banished in a challenge, you may return that card to your hand, which is obviously really good. Resources are a very big deal in this game. We could also play Aladdin, which I think is marginally better. Uh, I don't really need this Aladdin. I know this is gonna get confusing. Just remember this guy's the street rat. This guy's the heroic outlaw. Here's a cool little thing here. We can quest him first. And because we have an Aladdin, we can pay five ink instead of seven ink to play this on the Aladdin, even though he is tapped. And I guess I'll play the Elsa. We already put a card in our ink well. Okay, so he played Hans. Another grab your sword, really. So he must have an answer for the Aladdin. Oh, I see he has Rafiki. Okay. I mean, he used he used a lot for that. He might have a whole new world though. That's the problem. But I'm not really worried about it. Maleficent's good. All right, so we could play doctor here. So the doctor actually isn't that good just because of the fact that he might just shuffle my whole hand again, but it does give me three quests, which is a big deal. We're definitely gonna throw back the Archimedes into the inkwell because we don't need him. He's a little slow. We don't want him in our deck anymore. Uh, we will play this. I think I'm okay with trading this. You know what? I kind of like the lore here. I am very far ahead at the moment. I'm just going to put it like that. Very far ahead. The biggest card for them to have right now would be the Elsa. And if we see Elsa, don't worry. We will be letting it go. You played the Captain Hook. Whenever you play the... Whenever you play this character, you may return an action card named Fire the Cannons from your discard to your hand. Obviously, we saw him play that earlier, which is great. Your magic broom. This guy's going for like the full discard, return it back to your hand. Jafar! Okay. It's fine. 
So I will probably be casting Dragon's Breath here to kill this and probably the Rafiki. I think that's probably going to be good enough. I do want the cycle, so we won't play this. Uh, we'll throw back the Aladdin here. I don't really need it. We also have cards in our deck that let us draw more. We are running a little bit low on resources. Well, not low. Like we still have 30 cards, but lower, I should say. Uh, let's put Rafiki in. Actually, um, well, we're doing this for sure. Card's probably the scarce. I don't really care about this card. Um, I'm good with Rafiki to kill this. And if he trades, it's fine. Let me get to do this. This is three, three lore. Damn, son. Because I know he has a whole new world, I have to use my resources a little bit more aggressive. Okay, so he played France on the other side. Not the worst thing in the world. Drawing two more cards. Okay, I don't know if he actually has. Does he have another one? He does, yeah, because yeah, he used it, okay. So he can kill my Rafiki here for free, unless. Okay, so he's gonna put Captain Hook into here, which is fine. Oh my God, relax. It's just a video game, Jesus. I mean, if Captain Hook dies, I'm fine. Okay. Ooh, front's on the other side. All right, we will be doing this first. Be prepared, it's great. I'm thinking to myself, realistically, he is gonna play a whole new world, but we will play this first to see what we end up drawing. Maui, okay. Maui's actually really good because if he ends up questing with this, we can kill it the very next turn. We'll play Jafar. This is three lore, not a big deal, but it is a little spooky. He can't really hit this unless he has another fire of the cannons, which I praying to God he doesn't. Captain Hook, that's fine. Or be prepared, it's basically a board clear for seven, which is really nice. Um, Okay, he has another one. If I had to guess, this is a whole, this is a, a whole new world. Oh, it's Rafiki. All right, so he's hoping that he top decks it for sure, right? All right, we don't need LeFou. He's gonna wanna top deck it so bad, which means we wanna use our resources. I'm gonna use Jafar to lure, almost guarantee here. So we're just gonna do that real fast. This could trade it to Captain Hook. This has Rush and it doesn't have any lore. It's not allowed to quest, I should say, sorry. But let's make it this nice little trade here. And honestly, I don't even think I really need to use this because he's gonna probably trade this into this and then this goes into probably here, which means I should probably kill this. I am gonna just play around him having top decking a whole new world. I think that's the way I'm gonna lose this game. It's at the moment, we're looking pretty great. Okay, Archimedes is very slow. So Maui can hit here. Ah, Rafiki's also really good, but Rafiki doesn't do much here, unfortunately, because of the fact that Maui can't actually quest. So Maui has to hit here, which is more than okay, actually. Um, and then we will get the one lore. Basically, if you could picture it like this in a Disney movie, I gotta make this as PG as possible. The guy is bleeding out. What? He didn't? All right, he's conceded. I was gonna say some, how he's bleeding out and he's fighting for his last blood. Hercules. Okay, so he has bodyguard. Oh, that probably just seals the deal, to be honest. I will hit this no matter what. Um, I will play the Aladdin no matter what, obviously. Uh, I don't think we have an Aladdin on board, so this is completely fine. So Aladdin has two quests. I just want to make sure I hit with one because it guarantees me. I could actually just set up lethal here, right? It's weird saying that because there's not really lethal, but I will be setting up lethal. It's probably just the correct play. There's not a single card in the game that saves them. And that's the video game. I don't think we need to do this much fire from dragons in the first turn. So we're going first, which means we don't end up drawing a card, which is actually kind of a big deal. Uh, Because we have the doctors, I can think about keeping this, but it's probably too greedy. We'll keep the also. We get a one drop here. Going first and not getting one kind of sucks. All right, I'm going to toss back the uh, the doctor here because it's unlikely that we're going to need two of them. And unfortunately, I will have to pass. So again, we're a control deck. We can kind of base on what deck they're playing based on the color. So he's doing gray. He has goons in his deck. Not the goons. Okay, gray and yellow once again. LeFou, if he plays Simba next turn. Okay, so I'm going to guess that he's going to play Simba next turn, right? Luckily for us, we do have the Rafiki in our hand, which means if they play Simba and exhort him, which has like taunt, we absolutely just destroy them. Play the Simba. In real life, this card's worth actually a substantial amount of money just because of the fact that it's a one cost card for two lords. Yeah, oh my God. Read him like a goddamn book though. Well, I, sh I should have said watch the movie because fuck me, I'm not reading a book in the current year, but in this case, Elsa is actually better because he's probably looking to be like an aggro deck if I had to guess, right? We easy Rafiki here, to be honest. Destroy the Simba, the doctor into Lilo. Someone call a doctor, but not for me, am I right? We're really far ahead here. That was a huge deal, especially if they're more towards the uh, early to mid-range package. Another Simba and this Inkwell. Yeah, he's definitely more on the aggressive side for sure. Played a Tinkerbell. Okay, so this is my draw card if I want it. I'm not sure if I really, I could just play, okay. Unfortunately, I can't tap Elsa the turn she has played. I do want to play Maleficent here. I guess I'm going to toss back the Aladdin. I could play Elsa right now, but I think I want the draw, but she has a two, three. No, I should probably use my mana. I'm probably going to play Maleficent here because, oh, so here's the thing. I do like the fact that I have the freeze effect in the future if I need it. Elsa's kind of a pretty sick character to have, but I, I do want to find more stuff. So I'm going to play the Maleficent. And yeah, I obviously want to draw a card. Dragonfire is great. 
Well, I'm probably going to play Maui next turn, which means Elsa is probably going into the inkwell, so I have to let it go. Ah, okay, perfect, actually. So Tinkerbell does one damage to everything. Okay, she could have, uh, she could have lured first. She could have quested first, all right, but she didn't. She's stupid. She completely forgot about it. Now she's cheese. Dude, I don't know about you guys, but even in a movie, I'm sure they were freaking out, but I would be absolutely pissing my drawers. Oh, he's thinking about it. What? I just learned a brand new mechanic. You could quest after you upgrade. I, okay, listen, I'm not an expert at this game. Well, in this case, I could honestly just Maui then. Gas the Elsa, play the Maui. This is why Maui's so good. Because it lets me hit this in. I get to save my actual removal here and develop something. And I get to double quest. My doctor and my Maleficent. The guy conceded after I removed it, dude. <laughs> Damn, if that's not a Disney miracle, I don't know what is. I'm going to wrap it up there. If you ended up enjoying this video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscription, and I'll see you in the next one.